if there was a covenant breach on or before, if there was no covenant breach, so you had a loan, it's a five-year loan, it becomes repayable on demand if you breach a covenant. If there is no covenant breach, it stays non-current, isn't it? It's a long-term loan, you've got to pay it in five years' time, you, no covenant breach, no problem. If there is a covenant breach, did the bank say, it's okay, did they waive it? If they waived it before balance sheet date, it's okay, non-current. If they didn't waive it by balance sheet date, there is a problem. It becomes current. Let's look at an example. Entity B is preparing its 31st December financial statements. It has a six-year loan that is required to be settled on 31st December. So this loan is a five-year loan. It's going to be paid in five years' time. The loan covenants are tested quarterly. The company is in compliance with its covenants. At 31st December, plain sailing. They're happy. Everything's cool. However, on 31st March, the day before the financial statements are authorized for issue, the company breaches a covenant and the loan becomes repayable on demand. So this loan at balance sheet date, oh, it was non-current, we have to pay in five years' time, but before the financial statements were authorized for issue, they made a breach. Maybe the debt-equity ratio went wrong or something like that. They now the loan becomes repayable on demand. At balance sheet date, is it current or non-current? Non-current, you're right. Because the condition that exists at balance sheet date, non-current. And this is a non-adjusting post-balance sheet event. There may be a going concern issue. Lovely. You guys know this, eh? Let's look at the second example with covenants. It gets more difficult, I promise. Entity B is preparing its 31st December financial statements. It has a six-year loan that is required to be settled on 30th December, 31st December 2005. The loan contains covenants that are tested annually based on information as of 31st December. On 31st January, B prepares its management accounts for the year and the 31st December and identifies that it was in breach at 31st December of a covenant and the loan becomes repayable on demand. Question. What's happening here? They had, there was a breach of covenant at year end, which they only detected in January. What is the year end position? Current. Lovely. Lovely. Would your answer change if the company obtained a waiver of the breach on 1st of January. So the moment they found out about it on 31st January, they scurried over to the bank. Hey guys, we've got a breach of covenant. Oh, the bank says, we'll sort it out. Does that now change things? No. Thank you very much. That's lovely. That's the answer we still want. Right. It gets complicated, I promise. And I'm glad you're answering it that way. Let's look, about, let's look at rollover. Oh, sorry, before I get on to that. I'll tell you what we've seen in practice. Your loan, you have breached the loan covenant. Your loan becomes repayable on demand. You speak to the bank, you phone them up. Hey, oh, we'll sort out something. Is the loan current or non-current? The, the bank says we'll sort out something. Is there anything binding? Can the bank still knock on your door at 31st December and say, give me the money? See, the reality is contractually, they can. So if the bank says it's all right, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. I know somebody even asked the question at, at some point, what if we backdate them? the way? You can't. Backdating is fraud. Uh, yeah. So let's understand your question. I'm going to repeat the question for the benefit of everyone else. I've heard the question. You have a situation, and correct me if I'm wrong here. You, if you breach, there is a process of notification. The bank will notify you within 30 days if it's payable on demand. So what we're saying there, it's not yet payable on demand until the notification happens. Right. So in that case, then you've got to ask yourself, wait a minute, you've got to take, I would take legal advice and say, can the bank, without the notification, come and knock on my door and ask me for the money? If they can, 
then it's current. If they can't, not current. Because I don't, that's a legal question. But what I'm trying to get down to is the reality here, is what the situation is there. Do you want to add to that? Yeah, I think uh, uh, one of the things that you need to appreciate is the environment in which you are operating. It's, you know, countries like Pakistan, for instance, there are several instances where companies are in breach, right. okay? But these are taken as norms and okay. small breaches, you know, uh, banks will never enforce them. So we know that it is in reality, in substance over form, this breach really doesn't, doesn't make any difference really. Right. And it is never going to be, a bank is not, I mean there are instances where you have subsequent events also confirming that banks didn't do anything. And right. we also have, so I think in that environment, right. perhaps what you're saying, this, these standards are written for the world, different <laughs> world. I think. So we need, to, we need to appreciate the reality, the right. financial reality also. Right. Uh, let me give you an example. Mm. I think this was a real life example that in one situation, uh, we had exactly the same situation. Our technical people said that, you know, because you know, the, the, uh, there was no, uh, I mean, uh, company was in breach and, uh, you know, it has become current, uh, so it should be reflected as current liability. Uh, in this company, uh, it's a, it was a startup company and we had subsequent events which confirmed that, you know, the financial statements were being prepared okay. one and a half year after the balance sheet date, right. which, is, which was 100% evidence that the bankers are not insisting, you know, or not even enforcing, not even raising an issue. Right. So even that, if you go according to the standard, you know, yeah, right. now if you go back to the even IS-1, it says that uh, if you can go back to the, uh, to the slide uh, where you have defined the IS-1, you know, that also needs to be seen, due to be settled. Now we have a situation hundred percent evidence that, you know, in, such, in this situation, uh, the financial statements were being prepared two years after the balance sheet date. No, <laughs> you, you can't have no, more evidence. I take so you, you have situations like that which need to be appreciated. Understand, also. understand fully. Thank you for that comment. I mean, I, if you ask me a technical answer and a practical answer, I'll give you a different answer. <laughs> technical and business, business you know. don't, don't always match. Okay, let's carry on. Let's talk about rollover. I'm, I'm sure you appreciate this section. I'm going a bit off topic, topic, but I think it's relevant. Refinance a rollover. If you have the discretion to roll over, the loan is current, but you can roll over, you have the discretion and you have the intention to roll over, it's non-current. If you don't have the discretion to roll over, it's current. Very, very simple, right? Entity B is preparing its 31st December financial statements. It has a five-year loan that is due to be settled on 30th June. In December, it agrees a forward starting facility with the same lender that will replace the existing facility on 30th June. The new facility is unconditional and management of, of B intend to roll over. So this loan is going to be current. They got the choice to roll over. They want to roll over. Is this going to be current or non-current? Non-current, there we go. So that's going to be non-current. Easy one. Let's make it a little bit more complicated. So this thing in gray is exactly the same. Let's just say the new facility will become available only if B passes a covenant test in relation to interest cover and gearing ratios at 30th June. Now, at 30, 31st December, you're in a current position, but then you can only get the new facility if you pass ratios at 31st June, at balance sheet date. What's the reality? Current, thank you very much. I'm glad you're getting this one right. Eh? Our internal view, this is not in the standard, but we, we've taken a position. It does not have discretion at reporting date, and passing the test is not entirely within its control, and the probability of passing the test is not relevant. So you understand, we're getting the non-current answer, the current answer. Entity B is preparing its 31st December financial statements. It has a five-year loan. In December, it agrees a new facility with the same lender. 
we can transfer to the new facility 